Hello survivors, my name is Texecutioner and I'm narrating this video on behalf of Arvid, your State of Decay guide. If you're searching for tips and tricks for State of Decay 2, most of the results you find will be the basic tips for beginners. But we don't talk about basic things on this channel, right? So in this video, we are going to see 46 tips, tricks, and useful game mechanics most of you have never even heard of before. Even if you have thousands of hours of experience in the game, you will still find a lot of new information in this video. So after watching the video, make sure to comment how many new things you learned in this video. But if you're looking for beginner tips, they are also added throughout the video, so make sure to stay until the end and don't miss out. And if you still have questions after watching the whole video, join our Discord server. We can answer all of your questions there. By the way, a lot of time and effort were put into making these videos and analytical guides, so definitely consider subscribing to this channel for original content and no-nonsense videos of State of Decay news and guides in the future. Let's get to the video, and welcome to the channel! Number 1. In the harder difficulties, plague bloaters are a huge threat while driving. So when you hit a plague bloater while driving, never stop the car to exit. Always jump from the running vehicle. If you stop your vehicle and exit, you will only be standing inside the plague bloater cloud, which may result in the death of your survivor. So make a habit of jumping from a moving poisonous car. Number 2. In State of Decay 2, due to the hardware limitations of the previous gen consoles, the game has a global limitation of rendering only 7 members at base, including our active character. So if you recruit 8 or more members only to have a better base defense, not only will it increase the threat level, but only 6 of the AI members will be available to fight the zombies. Number 3. We can achieve 100% infection resistance to our whole community by having both the field hospital and the third level infirmary with the help of the pathology specialization. When we activate primary care in both of these facilities, we will receive 50% infection resistance from each facility as a bonus when we have pathologists in our community. So we will get a total of 100% infection resistance to our whole community. This costs a total of 6 meds in all difficulties and will last for an hour. Number 4. If you hear a bloater popping sound in the lethal zone, there is a 99% chance that there will be an extra large plague horde wandering nearby. So be careful on that area if you're unprepared. Number 5. Wooden fences and cornfields do absolutely zero damage to our cars, so feel free to run them over. Number 6. Cars are the best weapons in the entire game. Even juggernauts can be killed by reversing onto them while only receiving cosmetic damage. Most importantly, the spikes in the back of the Impaler and the front of the Zedbuster are not just cosmetic. They can kill ferals the easiest. You can get the Impaler by calling the Ultimate Edition Vehicle Delivery, and you can get the Zed Buster from the Go Bag Bounty Pack. Bonus tip, you can access all the Bounty Packs from Cash Beaumont just by disconnecting the internet, changing your system month, and starting the game. Number 7. Always park your car against walls and other objects so zombies won't be able to latch onto the engine and damage it when we're getting away. And, when escaping from multiple zombies, always get in from the right side of your car so zombies will grab and damage the right door instead of the most important left door. Also, when you get into your car surrounded by multiple zombies, always escape them by reversing your car so the engine won't be damaged by hitting the zombies. And, we can quickly kill the latch zombies with centrifugal force. Additionally, the cars with plows can withstand more engine damage if we hit the zombies with the front. Number 8. The game guarantees negative 50% search crash chance for max stealth specialization. But actually, max stealth specialization has negative 100% search crash chance. So feel free to fast search when you have max stealth. Number 9. 
The damage of explosives and incendiaries will not stack against hearts when multiples of them are used at the same time. So, explosives and incendiaries must be used one at a time against hearts, meaning wait for the explosive to explode or wait for the incendiary to finish burning before using the next one. But, the damage of explosives will stack when multiples of them are used at the same time against juggernauts. Number 10. Juggernauts and play juggernauts are protected by a game mechanic that will not let them die to less than 28 and 36 bullets. If you look at this data, you can see there is almost no difference between 556 and 762 when used against juggernauts. So using 762 against juggernauts is pointless. Number 11. In the harder difficulties, never use louder weapons like 50 cal rifles and other unsuppressed guns to solve any problems. You may think 50 cal rifles are good for everything, but no, they will only create more problems than they can solve. 50 cal is also slow and inefficient to use against the plague hearts, and they're inefficient to use against juggernauts too. This data shows how inefficient 50 cal really is compared to other calibers. So in my opinion, 50 cal should never be fired even once in the harder difficulties. Always use suppressed guns for everything, and maybe use brake attached guns or choke attached shotguns for play carts. Number 12. Louder weapons will make a lot of noise when we use it in the harder difficulties, but when our AI members use it, they make very little noise, and most importantly, they will shoot even when we give them an empty gun. They won't consume any bullets from our community resources either. So equip your base members with brake attached guns or 50 cal weapons for the ultimate base defense. But when you bring followers, don't give them the loudest guns like the B50FG. Even in the hands of our AI followers, the noise made by them will be almost as big as our minimap in Lethal Zone. So they only bring more trouble than they can handle. Number 13. The best way to control our AI followers is by entering stealth stance. While in stealth, they will not engage any zombies and they even cease to engage them when we enter stealth. Also, our AI members and followers take 50% less damage and infection than our active character, regardless of the difficulty we're playing. And if we consume scent block, our AI follower will also become invisible to the zombies, but without receiving the infection from the scent block. Number 14. If you have trouble locating a survivor in your base, mark them for exile. The game will highlight them in the map so we can find them easily and then we can cancel their exile. This will not cause any negative impacts in your community. Also, when you have 8 or more members in your base and only one of them is equipped with a powerful gun, mark them for exile during sieges so the game will not despawn that survivor under the 7 members rendering limitation. Number 15. The overall community standing increases the spawning rate of Freak Zombies, Zombie Hordes, and Freak Zombie Hordes. Completing missions, killing Freak Zombies, and destroying Plague Hearts are the fastest way to increase the standing of an active survivor. So avoid doing anything unnecessary when you start a fresh community in the harder difficulties. Learn to ignore the missions and focus on building your community first. For this specific reason, the Red Talon Contractors are the best survivors in a fresh game because they always come with negative 66% standing rewards. Number 16. Crouching will replenish stamina faster. This will be very useful when playing Daybreak, but if you want to replenish your stamina while running, specialize your cardio skill to marathon and max it out. With max marathon specialization, your character will run forever while carrying light weight. To improve the light carrying limit, specialize your wit skill to discipline and max it out to get the additional 30 pounds of light carrying capacity. But if your character is not specialized in marathon, craft energy drinks in the kitchen and use it while in combat. They constantly boost stamina for 30 seconds. They're cheap to make so they're a great alternative to the stimulants. And most importantly, if you want to run fast while plagued or injured, tap the jump button while sprinting. Number 17. Stuck Command consumes 10% fuel from our car regardless of its fuel capacity. So if possible, drive out of a situation instead of using the Stuck Command. Number 18. When you establish outposts, claim them in all four corners of the map, 
or one outpost in each town area so you can easily deposit the items at your nearest outpost during a supply run. If possible, keep an empty outpost slot for emergency situations. Bonus tip, you can get 7 outpost slots by installing a network signal booster in your level 3 command center and recruiting a red talon contractor with the hacking 5th skill. Number 19. Always carry a plague cure if you're playing in the harder difficulty levels. It's very important to save your survivors in critical situations. But sometimes you might not have a plague cure on your hands, so at least keep a plague cure ready in your supply locker so you can go to your nearest outpost or claim a nearby site if you have an empty outpost slot, then you can use a plague cure from your supply locker. But if you're unable to make a plague cure, switch your character at your outpost and admit them to your infirmary. This action will pause the plague progression and will not consume any meds. Number 20. If your car catches fire, it will explode only after 15 seconds regardless of how many zombies and juggernauts you hit. So instead of jumping out in front of zombie hordes, take your time, drive away from them and then exit your vehicle. If you have an advanced repair toolkit, you can repair the car before it even explodes. So always carry an advanced repair toolkit and a gas can in your car trunk. This is also very important to save your survivor in critical situations. The advanced repair toolkits do twice as much repair as a regular toolkit while being very fast. Bonus tip, vehicle repair kits cost 33% cheaper to make in the auto shop. Number 21, gun durability doesn't matter. Guns will always be damaged the same amount for each shot regardless of their durability. So durable guns just last longer. In the end, all guns cost the same amount of parts to repair when the number of shots fired are the same. So, gun durability just doesn't matter. But there is an exception. All of the semi-auto 22 caliber guns, handguns, and shotguns are not as durable as the durability meter suggests. They are three times weaker than other guns despite having very high durability. So try to avoid them if you're in part shortage. But if you have weapons handling specialization in shooting, you can partially repair the broken guns for free indefinitely. Number 22. Advanced weapon attachments are the top tier muzzle attachments. So if you have trouble finding an advanced brake, just buy a Clio Accelerator from the Prestige Traders. The Clio Accelerator is an equivalent to the Advanced Break, but first, you should have unlocked it by playing Daybreak. Number 23. Plague Hearts don't get stronger every time. Plague Hearts will only get more challenging as we destroy them. This means that every time we destroy a heart, more zombies will spawn around the next heart to protect it. And also, the damaged Plague Hearts don't regenerate their health over time. So if things go wrong, it's best to retreat and come back later. But, unlike Plague Hearts, the Juggernauts regenerate their health very slowly over time, and the Ferals regenerate their health very fast. Number 24. If you are looking for the quickest ways to destroy the Plague Hearts, use a Spec Ops Vector SMG or a G18 Auto Custom and equip them with advanced brakes. These are the fastest guns in the entire game. With these, even a Nightmare Zone heart can be destroyed in just under 2 seconds. But since Lethal Zone hearts are very strong, no gun can destroy the Lethal hearts quicker than 5 seconds. So if you're looking for the fastest way to destroy the lethal zone hearts, use bloater cloud grenades. Bloater cloud grenades are the most powerful explosive when ignited. Even a lethal zone heart can be destroyed in just under 4 seconds with only 3 grenades. If you're looking for the safest way to destroy a heart, stand on top of a spiked car and use whatever method you prefer. And if you're looking for the efficient ways to destroy the hearts, 
use bloater cloud grenades because they are very cheap to make. Or you can consume scent block and use heavy melee weapons with the powerhouse cardio skill. With powerhouse you can power swing the heavy weapons by holding the attack button. Only 7 power hits are enough to destroy a lethal heart. But scent blocks do not make you completely invisible from the zombies. The zombies in very close range can still detect you easily. Here are the Plague Heart data sheets. You can pause the video to look at this data if you want, or come back to look later. Number 25. Fire immobilizes the ferals, but it does not kill them immediately. The duration fire takes to kill the ferals depends on how potent the incendiary is. But the ferals must be continuously on fire to be killed in the least possible time, because ferals regenerate their health very fast. If the fire goes off, the ferals will regenerate their health, so we'll have to spend more incendiaries and more time to destroy them. If you're looking for an efficient and safer way to kill the blood feral packs, always carry a pyro launcher in your inventory. If we continuously light them up with pyro launchers at proper intervals, we can kill them in a few seconds with the least number of shots. And of course, you can stand on top of your car and shoot them. Number 26. If you're looking for a quicker, efficient, and not so loud way to kill the juggernauts, call the Independence Day Pack. Craft Bouncing Boris from the fireworks crafting station and use it against them. But Bouncing Borises have a super small blast radius, so when you throw it, line it up between the juggernauts and yourself so the juggernauts will enter the blast radius themselves. And it's also useful to kill the blood feral packs. Just throw it and lure the ferals inside the blast. But if you have trouble using the bouncing boris against juggernauts, then you can get the Starshank launcher from the Independence Day pack. Starshank launcher is not so loud, and it's cheaper than using guns and pipe bombs. But always aim for their chest when using Starshank launcher. Shooting their belly won't work. Number 27. When taking out hostile enclaves in the harder difficulties, clear the nearby zombies first and then park your car as your cover. If you're looking for a quicker and safer way to kill the hostile humans in harder difficulties, use bloater gas grenades. If you don't have them, take cover in the distance and shoot their head. Or consume scent block and throw a zombie bait on their building to kill them by zombies. Number 28. If you're looking for a super cheap way to gather resources in harder difficulties, promote a sheriff as your leader. If you have not destroyed all the hearts in your map, you'll get the pre-legacy sheriff missions. Play a few of them until you get the Sheriff Winning Allies mission. When you finish this mission, you will get an enclave benefit called Plague Heart Supply Drop. This supply drop only costs 150 influence with super low 10 minute cooldown timer. This drop always includes two rucksacks in which one of them will always be a medicine rucksack and the other one will either be medicine, ammo, or fuel. But if you don't have a Sheriff Survivor, you can use Find Resources Radio Command to locate a required rucksack for just 75 influence. This command does not locate an existing rucksack, but it will always spawn a new rucksack. You can also promote a trader as your leader and build the trade depot to call all the basic traders to your base itself and buy resources at normal rates. Besides, all the resources can be produced in our base itself except materials. Food and meds can be grown in our gardens, fuel can be produced in a still with our surplus food, and ammo can be crafted in our workshop with chemicals and parts. And always make a habit of always trading with the mission NPCs. Most of the time they will be selling a rucksack as well. Number 29. The heavy weapons are the best melee weapons to fight the ferals because heavy weapons immobilize them. Oh. 
ferals can be knocked down with doors, which will allow us to perform an execution. If the ferals latch onto our car's front or back, we can smash them even on the wooden fences to kill them easily. And juggernauts can be killed silently with the quietest melee weapons. Number 30. Hospitalizing a survivor will boost their individual morale by 15. So if any of your survivors have low morale, you can intentionally infect them and admit them in the infirmary to boost their morale. Hospitalizing is not only useful for pausing blood plague, but it's also useful to cure partial infection faster. Number 31. If you don't have enough members to claim a base, you can recruit anyone to claim it and exile the useless survivor immediately. This will not have any negative impact on your base. Number 32. All four tiers of suppressors suppress the gun noises exactly the same. The low tier suppressors just wear the guns faster and the top tier suppressors wear the guns slower. That being said, there will be absolutely zero difference between a low tier and a top tier suppressor when we attach them to the unbreakable weapons like bolt action and lever action guns. Number 33. If you're doing solo survivor runs, get a Red Talon Contractor with the Vigil Guard first trait and Frontline Experience third trait. They will have a total of negative 120 fatigue severity, so they never sleep. If you want to learn how to predict the traits of a Red Talon Contractor before recruiting them, check this video here. Number 34. Stealth specialized survivors can move fast while in stealth. But if your character is not specialized in stealth, you can achieve the same by dodging while in stealth without pressing the sprint button. Most importantly, if you have a survivor with stealth specialization and max acrobatics, you can roll while in stealth for super fast stealth. Number 35. Salvage Furnace increases the parts yield of weapon salvaging by 50%, but it will also stack when we have multiple salvage furnaces installed in our various facilities. Here's how many parts we get when we have no salvage furnace installed, and here's how many parts we get when we have one salvage furnace installed, and here's how many parts we get when we have four salvage furnaces installed in our workshop, auto shop, armory, and forge. Number 36. And if you bring parts to your next community via legacy members, fill them with piles of weapon remains instead of parts if you have them. Each pile of weapon remains can produce 50 parts and you can carry 3 of them in each slot, so a total of 150 parts per slot compared to 99 parts per slot. And if you have a salvage furnace facility mod, each pile of weapon remains will produce 75 parts, so a total of 225 parts per slot. Number 37. Mysterious wandering traders visit our maps every weekend. But they don't just visit only once every weekend. We can make them visit multiple times. Once you trade with them, quit the game and play again in that community for some time to spawn another mysterious trader within a maximum of 3 to 4 hours. But quitting the game and opening it after a few hours might not work. You have to actually play in that same community for a few hours to get another trader. Number 38. If traders come equipped with good guns, it's safe to kill them for their equipped guns by luring zombies toward them using zombie. There won't be any consequences. But never kill mysterious traders and rare skill traders. When they die, they won't spawn for a few weeks. Number 39. Survey car automatically reveals the sights and plague hearts within a 150 meter radius as we drive. The slower we drive, the more accuracy the surveying will be. Other cars only have less than 50 meter surveying radius. Survey cars will lose this feature when they're upgraded. Number 40. If you want to farm influence, craft strong painkillers in the level 3 infirmary and sell them to the traders or enclaves. For the amount of resources spent, the strong painkillers offer more value than the bulk plague cures. And if you're wanting to farm plague samples at a 90% rate, 
kill the plague zombies using crossbows with the pathologist in green map difficulty. Number 41. We can build all the leader facilities in our base by promoting and demoting different types of leaders. Once we start building a leader facility, we can demote that leader before the leader facility is even completed. The facilities will work the same without the leaders. Number 42. The best way to level up all the skills of our survivors is using the Watch Training Videos feature in Lounge 3. It improves the skills slower, but it improves all the skills of all of our base members and it costs nothing. So the cumulative experience we gain will be a lot more than we think. But the fastest way to improve the cardio skill is just keep running around in your base, even if we have no stamina. Number 43. Falling from heights causes severe injuries. But we can avoid it by using zombie emotes. Number 44. We can enlist followers from enclaves as bait in the harder difficulties. As long as one member of an enclave is alive, there won't be any consequences with the enclave relationship when one of the members die and they can even be used as a mobile trader. Number 45. The different sniper supports in the game provided by different sources are not the same. The sniper tower provides 50 cal support at a slower fire rate, so it's good for juggernauts. The sniper support provided by Enclaves and Providence Ridge Landmark Outpost are 762 at a slower rate, so they're almost useless. But the Clio support transmitter provides 762 at a faster fire rate, so it's good for hordes of zombies and ferals. So always have Clio support transmitter installed in one of your facilities to call Clio sniper support during critical situations. Finally, a bonus tip, which is more like a bundle of bonus tips. Here we will see some useful tricks and mechanics of State of Decay 2, which may improve your gameplay. Number one, when we salvage guns, the loaded bullets will automatically be deposited back to the supply locker, so it's unnecessary to unload guns to salvage them. Number two, when we press the dodge key near any zombies without giving any directional input, our character will step back a little instead of dodging. It's useful for melee killing ferals and multiple zombies. Number three, grabbing and pushing a zombie towards a bloater will pop it. This will be useful to pop the sleeping bloaters without wasting bullets. Number four, injuries will reduce our character's max carrying capacity. I gotta drop this off soon. But our light carrying capacity will only be reduced when our character gets a lot of injuries. Trauma does not affect our carrying limit. Number five, if you hate Drucker County, mostly because it's hard to travel around, you'll love it with this shortcut map. Number six, when an entrance with double doors is locked, try the other door before smashing your way in. Number seven, if you have trouble throwing the incendiaries accurately, you can aim your gun and then throw them to get accurate results. Number eight, if you think daylight is short and night is long, that's actually not true. Each day of State of Decay 2 is 90 minutes long and the usable lighting conditions will be 48 minutes long but the unusable lighting conditions will only be 42 minutes long. Finally, we are at the end of this video. We hope you found this video useful. If so, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any original guides. And definitely let us know in the comments how many new things you learned in this video. If you have further questions, join our Discord server to get your answers. This is Texecutioner signing off, and we can't wait to see you in the next video.